Ja. Yeah, it's time to say the rest. Members of the jury, the state council is now rested in the presentation of their testimony. Mr. Schinger, are you prepared to speak this time? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to we don't have to take a break. Might have one moment to make sure everybody's in the hallway. So it's your, if you want to take a break, we can do it. If you want to just go outside, that's fine. I would be in your honor. Thank you. Just, uh, let me just step out for a moment. That's fine.
Show hands come up, Sam. Go ahead, start drinking my life.
And you know what the people that know DJ Freedom? Uh, and among those people, uh, what is his reputation for peace? Very well. The guy's never been known to do anything bad. And what is his reputation for honesty? Very good. He's never lied to me. Thank you, sir. Just a couple of things. Good morning, sir. Um, you testified that he has a reputation for honesty. Is that what your testimony was? Does that mean, and you, are you friends with some of his other friends? Okay, so have you and your, your uh, mutual friends, have you had conversations about his honesty? Yes. And in what context did that come up? Did you ever have any conversations about his honesty? Uh, did you know who he was dating at the time Brendan died? Um, did you ever have any conversations with your friends during the time that he was dating Ms. Stensky? About Ms. Stensky or about? About the defendant's reputation for honesty. Right. I don't have anything else. Thank you, sir. Yes, I Uncle, is that what you're 
That could be argued, I don't know. Uh, you know other people, obviously, in the community that you may not do? Yes. And among those people, what is his reputation for these partners? What is his reputation for honor? And how long have you known him? Well, it's like, thank you, sir. I've known Um, where do you where do you live? Just tell you don't have to give us your street address. Laurel Springs. Laurel Springs. So that's kind of nearby Haddon Township, correct? Yeah. I mean, it's it's close. You see each other regularly. Is that a fair statement? Not regularly. Okay. Um, I don't know. Just holidays or? Holidays up here. Are you are you Kelly Criado's father? No, I'm not. Okay. So there's another brother then. So when you would see each other on holidays, that would be like at a family gathering, correct? Sure. And would your, um, are your, are your parents still alive? You just your grandparents? Uh, grandmother. Okay. All right, so she'll be present at these gatherings as well? Yes. And would you agree with me that generally speaking, everybody's usually on pretty good behavior at family gatherings? Sure. I don't have anything else to change this.
provide a potential more extender.
I do too. I mean, I only spent about 10 minutes on it, but I thought it was very difficult.
does not comport with logic and reason. And all three of the medical examiners indicate that it was based on where the body was found. At the end of the day, the state does not have to prove a cause of death, just that the death was intentionally caused. Uh, they have not done that wrong. They have put on no evidence to say that Brendan Criado was killed or that DJ Criado was the person who killed him. There are three experts, each and every one of them gave alternatives based on where uh, the body could have been found. And they included natural or accidental causes of death. Um, moreover, Your Honor, even assuming that the court took the evidence um, in the light most favorable to the state, there is nothing linking E.J. Criado to that killing if it actually occurred. There is weeks of text messages that were read, uh, read to the court, and in all of those, they almost kind of, sort of, establish a motive and I realize the state does not have to be promoted, that is not an element. But none of that, none of that directly linked DJ Criado to uh, the death of his son. And moreover, Your Honor, it is uh, not even circumstantial linked. The only circumstance that links DJ Criado to this death is that he's the last adult to see him. That's it. That's the only thing that links this man, this offender, to the death of Randy Criado. He's the last adult we know of. To see it. For that reason, the state's case uh, fails. Regarding the child endangerment, Your Honor, it's essentially the same argument, but moreover, I would just say that there is testimony that Brendan Criado was well cared for, well nourished, well loved uh, by everyone, including especially uh, his father, DJ Criado. But the only evidence in the record is nothing to suggest otherwise in the record, and for that reason, Your Honor, I believe the state's case fails on that matter. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Judge. Um, Judge, at this juncture in the proceedings, as I'm sure the court well knows, the state enjoys all reasonable inferences um, that can be drawn from the testimony that was presented. Obviously, this is a circumstantial case. The state has never claimed it to be anything other. Um, in that regard, I know Mr. Cushino just mentioned that he asked the medical experts hypothetical questions uh, with regard to um, where Brendan's body was found. And could it have been different if he was found on the couch? I guess that's a possibility, but the facts that were presented or that he was not found on the couch, he was found in the creek. The other question that was asked was, um, would your opinion be any different if he lived across the street? Again, it doesn't matter if he didn't live across the street, he lived three quarters of a mile away. That combined with the clean socks, but I, uh, also in conjunction with uh, the defendant's clear motive and the opportunity, I, it's my opinion that the lack of injuries actually indicates this defendant um, in his son's death. So I think in all the reasonable inferences to the evidence presented by the state, the motion should be denied. That would be my request. I, I do know that the uh, <coughs> three expert uh, pathologists who did testify indicated in each instance that their opinion was that it was a homicide, although the ideology was determined by the uh, medical experts. Um, I think the state has produced evidence showing that there was a homicide. Now, obviously, it is a circumstantial case. The standard to be applied by the trial judge in deciding uh, a motion for an acquittal under Rule 3, uh, colon 18-2 is the same which applies when a motion for acquittal is made at the end of the state's case or at the end of the entire case. The trial judge must decide whether the evidence is sufficient to warrant a conviction. More specifically, the trial judge must determine whether the evidence viewed in its entirety, be it direct or circumstantial, and given, giving the state the benefit of all favorable testimony as well as all the favorable inferences which reasonably could be drawn therefrom is sufficient to enable the jury to find that the state <coughs> charge has been established beyond a reasonable doubt. In this case, giving, uh, it is a circumstantial case, everybody is in agreement with that. Giving the state uh, all reasonable inferences, I think sufficient evidence has been presented to this jury that they could make a determination that the uh, death of uh, Brendan was caused by uh, Mr. Criado. Uh, the state has uh, developed a, a motive uh, regarding his actions during this time frame. Uh, accordingly, with reference to the first count of the, uh, the murder count, I do find giving the state all reasonable inferences that sufficient evidence has been presented that the matter will go to the jury. 
I think the argument really mirrors the argument that would apply to the second count, uh, which is the endangering count. Uh, as the indictment uh, states uh, that uh, the defendant having a legal duty and responsibility for the care of Brendan uh, knowingly caused harm to the child or would make the child a or neglected. Obviously, if the jury finds that the harm was caused by Mr. Criado, that then a reasonable jury could return a verdict of guilty on that count also. Uh, accordingly, I'm going to deny the applications uh, made by the counsel at this time and deny the motions for acquittal. Um, now, just from a timing perspective, uh, what I'd like to do is take a break. We have to have a charge conference with counsel. Um, I'm going to complete that. and. Um, then the rest of the day, counsel to prepare as we discussed earlier, and as I advised the jury, we agreed because of the timing uh, of the uh, anticipated summations of my charge, and the fact the jurors would have, would have had to have you know, left early tomorrow, uh, we agreed it made more sense to present the case to them on Tuesday, so they'll have the <coughs> next week and the whole time thereafter to engage in their deliberations. So with that, we're going to take uh, we take a 50 minute break and then I'll come back out with the record. And perhaps we can meet changes first, uh, go over any proposed change and then uh, charge and we'll come out with the record. All right, okay. so I'll see everybody in 50 minutes on my change. You want to go up? I think this is a little over.